Oleg Borisovich has turned a bit younger and turned to Ms. Armashova. Thank you for inviting thoracoscopic surgeons to this thor thoracic section. That means that you treat us as surgeons, not only as physicians. My presentation will be of two parts. First, I will speak about uh, removal of uh, neoplasms of the mucosa. Uh, the cancer of the esophagus accounts for 3% of all malignant tumors. And uh, in the world, there are about 5.2 million cases of death because of esophageal tumors. The earlier the stage, the better is the median survival. What is the problem of the early diagnostics? It is not only that our facilities are equipped insufficiently, but because endoscopists do not see all tumors only when thoroughly examining the esophagus. For instance, this patient was admitted last year to our department uh, <coughs> uh, with a uh, uh, diagnosis a uh, 60 millimeter neoplasm in the upper third of the uh, esophagus. And we found another six millimeter focus, and it was moderately differentiated adenocarcinoma. Uh, we see. Uh, we don't have to see the video. I see an endoscopic image. You can see the. Uh, demarcation and line outline of it, and specialists see both the microvesicular picture. This is dissection. Another one. Uh, this uh, our la latest patient. Uh, she was treated for reflux esophagitis in the local outpatient clinic. Only a year later, the endoscopist took a sample and found adenocarcinoma. Uh, there is, uh, uh, there exists uh, routine method of diagnostic uh, cremoscopy uh, with 2% solution of Lugol. And we also we use uh, NBI examination in the narrow range of light. The classification of microvesicular image, we can differentiate whether it is an inflammation or a malignant lesion. But analyzing the condition of the capillaries, we can understand what the depth of invasion will be. Why we should understand that pre prior to operation? International recommendations say that high-grade dysplasias, T1A cancers, can be endoscopically removed if they do not trans, uh, trans, transgress the mucosa. However, the submucosal cancer uh, may invade the submucosa by two hundred micrometers. There are also other factors uh, like microvascular invasion. And when we find an epithelial neoplasm, uh, if we identify it as the malignant one, 
we uh, perform a CT scan. And if uh, it uh, invades uh, uh, through the walls of the esophagus, we do endoscopic ultrasound. Uh, if we find something, we send patient for uh, chemotherapy or uh, surgery. This is a cap resection because this type of resection uh, makes it possible for us to remove small uh, tumors on block. If the tumor is bigger, we uh, remove it piecemeal. Now you will see the endoscopic dissection in the submucosal layer, uh, at least three centimeters from the edge of the tumors. A circular incision. After this circular incision, we start dissection in the submucosal layer. Uh, the blue here is the submucosal layer. The tumor is dissected, removed for histological review. Uh, then the esophagus is carefully examined for perforation or bleeding. After we remo have removed the neoplasm, uh, we should understand whether it is malignant or not, and uh, uh, a literate and knowledgeable morphologist will tell you uh, what kind of tumor that was, and the depth of invasion should mandatorily be noted because uh, here you see the moderately differentiated squamous cancer. This is what uh, the tumor looks like in the basal uh, mucosa membrane. Uh, we have made quite a number of tumors, 22. To, uh, the full number was 29, practically no perforations and no complications. There was one late bleeding, and we had also three esophagus strictures, two after the circular dissection of the mucosal membrane, and one uh, after a uh, semicircular uh, dissection, uh, uh, because this is as regards epithelial neoplasm, uh, submucosal tubers. We perform submucosal. Uh, tunneling mucotic resections. Whether it is safe, there are lots of papers telling us that tunnel resection is uh, more is safer than endoscopic uh, dissection. Uh, there is a trial uh, on 80 patients uh, for tunneling resection of uh, some mucosal tumors. Uh, the complications were registered in 8.75% of cases, and all of them were eliminated endoscopically. Uh, 
speaking about safety. If the video does not run, we have performed some mucosal dissection. So uh, here you see the tumor, two and a half centimeters. We made a tunnel in the submucosal layer, and uh, blue is the mucosa, and on top you see the muscle. Uh, it is impossible to remove that without damage to the mucosa. So, and we've uh, hit the pleura, we saw the aorta, the pleura, we sutured that with the tureo suture, and seven days after, we released the patient from the hospital. When we speak about the submucosal tumors, we uh, mostly we speak about benign neoplasms uh, uh, and also uh, uh, the gastrointestinal submucosal tumors in the esophagus uh, can be seen really. However, uh, there are reports uh, that uh, about 28 percent of all tumors uh, uh, were submucosal. Before you remove them, you never know. We have made 11 tunnel resections. Uh, all uh, neoplasms were removed on block. The time of operation was from 40 to 86 minutes. So, on an average, about 50 minutes. Uh, this method makes it possible to remove uh, fairly big submucosal tumors of the esophagus. Thank you for your kind attention. Last one, I was a little bit afraid with this clip on this uh, hole in the esophagus. What what did you did? Did you prove this by an, an, an enema? So do you get them a contrast uh, 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 fluid to drink so that you are sure that this is close? Because the the kind of complication you you have at the tenth or twelfth day, but you said you. Uh, let them home at the eighth day. So what happens after uh, uh, release of the patient? Uh, we checked that with an X-ray examination the next day. I wanted to ask that question myself, and I wanted to, uh, only to comment. Uh, Marina Vladimirovna said that everything was very good, but we were very closely monitoring that uh, patient for the whole week. We did uh, X-ray, then another X-ray, then a CT scan, so it was not that easy. And for some mucosal resection, what are the indications? What are the sizes which you can offer the patient? According to the international guidelines, uh, we have no guidelines as to the size of the tumor. But uh, they say only that uh, if the tumor is bigger than two centimeters, we observe those, and if it is under Two, uh, five centimeters, then we remove them. But what to do with three and four centimeter tumors? We can dissect it, but it may remain in the patient if it is a big tumor which cannot be pulled out.
good that you do this for these patients, uh, but if you get complications, so if you just hurt something, um, then you need, I guess, in some cases, surgery. Of course. And uh, this kind of surgery in emergency case means that you uh, have to have space in the surgical department because they have also their program to, to get up. So is that in any case, uh, have, you, have you good communication to the surgeon that you say, well, tomorrow perhaps we have a very difficult case, but we do it, and, uh, but in case, uh, be uh, uh, prepared or you just do it by your own. In Germany, they all do this by their <laughs> own, and, uh, and then they come with a problem, and then we have to stop everything, so I don't know. Naturally, we are lucky in this case. We work in the, cancer in, in the Petrov Cancer Institute. Uh, all patients uh, uh, go through the surgery department of Mr. Levchenko, so uh, he uh, stands as our backup there. And after this, operations, metastatic spread is in 15% cases. After histological verification, we usually subject such patients to surgery. Speaking about melanoma, we had primary melanoma in the esophagus. At that time, we didn't understand what it was. The patient came from I don't remember where, and uh, he had a diagnosis, an epithelial neoplasm of the esophagus. No one performed biopsy because uh, there was uh, uh, danger of bleeding, and we decided to dissect it. And during dissection, we saw that it was melanoma, and Evgeny Vladimirovich uh, performed an operation, and it was quite successful. But it was the only case. We don't have any statistic, and we do not have any long-term results so far. He is alive. What do you see as complications? This case, for instance, was a complication. No, it wasn't. It is either bleeding or perforation. Uh, no perforations. We had bleeding, but not very, nothing very special, just standard bleeding during this section. К сожалению, ничего невозможно понять. Микрофон не употребляется. Unfortunately, I cannot translate anything because they don't use microphones and are speaking at the same time. These patients, if you do CT scans, most of them have mediastinal layer. How, how do you define perforation? Ну, по международным годам. According to the international guidelines, uh, uh, the diagnosis of perforation can be done only after CT scans. And uh, we send the patient to the CT scan after uh, resection when we had strong suspicions that there will be air present in the pleura. And all these operations are made only with CO2, with inflation. No endoscopist will perform any operation on the esophagus in the open air. Uh, four complications. What do you do about these patients? Do you immediately mm, take an X-ray of them? Is there any standard? If after surgery we don't suspect anything bad, we do the 
X, uh, X-ray the next day, or we can do it in the night of the same day or as required. We don't have this information. There are no guidelines on some mucosal tumors. It is never said anywhere uh, that they should uh, be sub subjected to CT scan. We only monitor them, nothing else. Thank you.